Today's video is brought to you by Generic Daytime Cold Medicine. Like, literally without this stuff, I would not be able to make this video right now. I'm sick again. Or still, but it's gotten worse. Since flying back from San Francisco, I don't know if I was exposed to something on the plane or what, but I have not been feeling great at all the last few days. So, let me just take two of these. And let's get into the video. We're doing this right here on the couch because this is about where I've been living for the last two or three days. So a couple quick announcements here. It seems like an email, a support email or a, a newsletter email went out. Make new friends during this special weekend is one of the sections that was included in this email. Friendships are special and this weekend they have extra bonuses too starting February 8th at 1 p.m. Pacific time. That's today, a couple hours after this video goes live. Um, make sure you check in your time zone, 1 p.m. Pacific time. It's the typical start time for events in Pokemon Go. Be sure to make a new friend and honor your current friends with special gift and trading bonuses. Friendship will increase twice as fast until February 11th at 1 p.m. Pacific time. <clears throat> and trades will require half as much Stardust. Plus receive double candy for every trade you make. Let's celebrate the joy of friendship together. So this weekend, starting today, a little later today, uh, friendship is going to increase at twice the normal rate. So if you're working on getting ultra or best friends with someone, that's good news. Um, trades are going to cost half Stardust. So hold on to your special trade. Hopefully you haven't already done it this morning. Um, I put this on Twitter as well. Uh, so hopefully you're holding on to your special trades. But if there's a, a shiny you've been eyeing that a friend's been holding on to for you, this might be the time to trade for it because it's half Stardust cost plus double candy for every trade you make. So if you're trading Pokemon that were caught over a thousand, a thousand, a hundred. Okay, gotta take that call. <clears throat> Hello. All right. Thanks. Bye. There's good news for anyone uh, supporting on Patreon. New stuff's coming your way. I know we talked about some patron-exclusive merch a while back. It's finally happening. Um, anyway, back to the, the friendship special reduced Stardust. So from, again, today, February 8th, 1 p.m. Pacific time, until February 11th, so 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th. You can get four reduced special trades in, uh, four days worth, well, three whole days worth of uh, reduced regular trades and double candy for every trade you make. So if you've been holding on to a lot of Pokemon for distance, now's a good time to trade them. You're going to get double candy. Uh, if you've caught a ton of Pokemon and you're trying to re-roll them for Twilight Cup or to get better IVs maybe, uh, now's a good time to trade them as well. So trading, special friends trading event going on this weekend. All right, I got to sit up for this one because uh, we're going in deep here. Eh, not too deep. So earlier today, Pokemon Go tweeted, Happy Year of the Pig. Share this AR photo of Spoink to wish your fellow trainers a year full of lucky trades, healthy Pokemon, and prosperous Pokemon Go adventures. And I thought that that was just a funny way of saying retweet or you'll have bad luck all year. So that's what I tweeted. And wow, you guys really took it seriously. Um, 661 retweets, but don't worry. I don't control your luck. You make your own luck, I think people say that. So, spoiler alert, if you don't retweet, your luck's fine. Now, the interesting thing is, I was looking at this, and it's nice, you know, uh, uh, thematic background. We have some kind of Chinese gazebo thing. Sorry, I'm sure there's a name for it. There's a spoink. It's the year of the pig. Nice red kind of background. But then there's green paint splattered on it. Thematically, stylistically... I don't know what the purpose of this green paint splatter is. I've met a lot of the design team, you know, the, the artists who work on these things at Niantic. They don't seem like the type of people who would just put green paint splattered on an image for the Year of the Pig for no reason. And then I remembered, there's a certain Pokemon that we've all been wondering about who has green paint coming out of his tail. Hmm. I'm going to let you think about this one for yourself, but Smeargle, green paint, welcome to the conspiracy couch, not to be confused with another couch that's fairly popular on the internet.
I'm going to leave it at that, but to cap it off, I asked. Anyone got some questions you want answered? Because I need to pad out this video, since I can't really go outside and do anything Pokemon Go related. Oh, top question. Totally didn't plan for this. I'm looking at the questions for the first time right now. Your thoughts on the holdup of Smeargle? Well, there they are. I think we just got our first hint that Smeargle could be coming very soon to Pokemon Go. How can I... How's this? I'm just going to go back to being comfortable. There it is. Who do you main in Smash Ultimate? Uh, I've been playing a lot of Simon. I also like Isabel, King K. Rule. I'd say those are my top three. What top six Pokemon would you consider best meta for the Twilight Cup? So I want to do a live stream probably this weekend sometime where I do some Twilight Cup prep. I have a lot of Pokemon I need to evolve um, and then testing. So if you're ultra friends with me, stay tuned. I might need you to send me some battle invites for a live stream. But to get into what I'm thinking for Twilight Cup, here are all the Pokemon that I'm looking at. Lots of Pokemon here. Obviously not all of them evolved. Um, Azumarill. I'm going to say Toxicroak is definitely like must have. Uh, it's very important. There are a lot of Pokemon shaping this meta. Among them, Alolan Muck, uh, Drapion, and <clears throat> and Skuntank, the Dark and Poison types, because their only weakness is Ground. The only Pokemon with Ground type moves, you're going to be looking at Nidoking, uh, Nido Queen, and Toxicroak. Toxicroak can learn Mud Bomb. So those are some of the best counters. I'm going to say Toxicroak out of those is the best. It matches up really well against a lot of other Pokemon. Counters a super strong move. Uh, it beats dark types like Umbreon and especially Tyranitar. I can't exactly say what I would nail down as the top six Pokemon, but they're definitely somewhere among these. Um, Tentacruel is another one that, that I don't have on here, that I need to get on here. I just all my Tentacruels are too big for Twilight Cup. But again, live stream over the weekend where I'm going to go deeper into this. I'm going to evolve all these Pokemon. It'll be Pokedex Toxicroak, Pokedex Drapion. Uh, Skun Tank, and then we'll test them out. Stay tuned. Which game mechanic do you most want to see next in Pokemon Go? Breeding, abilities, etc. Um, for me personally, I think it's more depth in the battle system. So whether that comes through abilities, through status effects from moves, through uh, buffs and d debuffs. What are, what are we calling these? <clears throat> Stat changing moves. Um, more depth in PvP is something I'd really like to see. Where are you going for Swinub Community Day? I don't actually know yet. I might just stay local because I'm... I mean, God, if this sickness continues, I'm never going anywhere again. <laughs> Lady Brittany asks, Top five favorite things from the weekend with Niantic and all the Summer Squad. Um, I don't know if I can do a top five, but I think the best thing about it was just, for one thing, getting to see all my friends from the Summer Tour Squad and beyond, um, but also the we were actually able to share feedback on behalf of the community and kind of talk to Niantic directly about these things rather than just like making a video and hoping that the right person at Niantic writes down notes. Um, it was really cool for us to be able to bring up all these concerns and have Niantic listen, not only listen, but like type them, write them down. Um, I think it's good. It, it shows that we're moving in a good direction with Niantic and with the Pokemon Go community moving forward. It's another. It's another call I gotta take. Next question. Do you feel like we're getting inundated with opportunities to get rare Pokemon, making the game too easy? As of late, community days just give away top tier Pokemon. The only challenge or excitement left for a lot of people is shinies, it seems. Um, no, I don't think so. Here's the thing. I know for a lot of people, it's a, it's a collection game. And I said this for the longest time, that as soon as you have them all, you're done and there's nothing else to do. But now there are more things to do. Uh, well, PvP. In my mind, I know it's not true for everyone, but in my mind, PvP is the end game. PvP is, is what you are funneling your resources into um, at the end of the day. You catch Pokemon, you uh, battle raid bosses, you do all this so that you can have... As I was saying before my memory card cut me off there, um, PvP, in my mind, is the end game. You collect resources so that you can put them into PvP. You collect Pokemon, you catch Pokemon so you can get Stardust. Uh, you do raids so you can get items, uh, TMs, or maybe even Pokemon that you need for PvP. So if you look at the game with PvP as an end game, 
then making rarer Pokemon easier to catch doesn't make the game too easy, it just helps everyone get on a more even playing field for the end game, which is, again, in my mind, PvP. Um, if you're only playing to collect, and your only challenge is to catch them all, well then yeah, it makes it easier, but I've always said from the very beginning that as a collection game, uh, it's finite, right? We needed something like PvP, we needed an end game, a reason to have all these Pokémon and these resources, uh, to, to have something to do with them, aside from just go, look what I got today. So if you approach the game with PvP as an end game, um, yeah, it's not, it's not making things too easy because there's still so much more challenge in making the right team, in, in learning what's effective, in learning how to battle, um, in proving you're the very best, like no one ever was. And then there's, there's one more question that I wanted to answer. So apparently my SD card filled up, and when that happens, my camera doesn't do anything to let me know. It says it on the screen, but I'm not looking at the screen. I'm on the other side. So anyway, um, the last question that I answered that I want to get on video here is, would you ever consider doing straight up Nick vlogs? I get Pokemon Go as your lifeblood, but I really dig the person making the content. Travel vlogs would be enough. You get some incredible shots in your vids. Um, and to answer honestly, I no, I, I wouldn't be interested in making um, more regular vlogs. The One of the things that I've really come to notice over the last year, year and a half, is that I'm actually really happy that my content is sort of compartmentalized to this small portion of my life, this one of my interests, um, to Pokemon Go. Because there is this immense amount of pressure to create a video every single day that, that is gonna grab the audience's attention. Some days I'll go out and I'll record a whole video trying to find a new shiny Pokemon or whatever, and, and nothing ends up happening in game that's really worth a flashy thumbnail or, or a eye-catching title. Um, and those are some of the most stressful videos to have to make. And I think having to do that outside of just Pokemon Go, like in my actual life, um, would just be a, a very dangerous thing. And you see a lot of YouTubers talking about this lately with burnout um, and mental health. Just putting yourself in that position to try to turn your life into content um, I think is a really unhealthy thing we're realizing. It's something that not everyone can do and definitely not everyone can sustain. You know, I've realized uh, over the last year, year and a half, that I really don't like sharing a lot of personal details. You've probably noticed if you go back and look at the way the videos have kind of changed over the last year or so, there really is a lot less of my personal life in these videos, and that's because I felt like I'd really lost some sense of privacy by putting so much of my life publicly online. So I'm sure a lot of you who've really been paying attention have noticed that there is a lot less of my private life um, going into the videos, and I'm, I'm trying to focus more specifically on Pokemon Go. Now, with that said, uh, when I'm traveling, I can still do the travel videos, I can get all the great shots, I can convey all of that through Pokemon Go, and that's what I intend to continue doing. The great thing about Pokemon Go is that I can just land somewhere in a country, link up with the local community, and they are more than happy to show me around, uh, teach me about the culture, about the food, uh, about the country, show me all the most interesting spots in the city. and. That's not just for me, that goes for anyone. If you're traveling and you can find the local Pokemon Go community, you will have people willing to show you, happy to show you around and introduce you to their culture. Um, so that's something I intend to continue doing. But the videos that I enjoy most are ones with more of a purpose, where I have this kind of focused idea. Um, things like what I did in Morocco, uh, or Singapore with Brandon Tan, or the Celebi videos, or some of my favorite videos that I've ever made because I really came into it with this clear purpose and I do have a couple more videos like that planned coming up throughout this year so it should be a lot of fun but to to make an actual like my life Nick kind of focused videos I, I don't think that's something that personally um, I really have any interest in doing but don't worry I will continue to share my perspective and my thoughts um, on all these things as I travel through the lens of Pokemon Go. That question was a lot easier to answer the first time when my camera wasn't actually recording. I feel like I rambled so much this time trying to hit all the same points. But anyway, yeah, to sum it up, um, no, I, I don't think I wanna 
make more personal vlogs, the travel stuff will still happen just through the lens of Pokemon Go. Um, and then I do want to do more culturally focused content and, and bigger projects, bigger videos. Again, I have more of those planned coming up throughout the year. But, um, you know, focusing more on myself and my personal life is not something that I, I have any plans to share publicly. In fact, I'm pulling back on how much of my private life I put out online. Um, so there's that. And that's the end of this video, I guess. Don't forget, trading friendship event starts a couple hours after this goes live. Lasts throughout the weekend. And PvP stream, Twilight Cup stream. Stay tuned for that sometime throughout the weekend. See you soon.